I'm Steven, and I'm a level one chef. Hi, I'm Gabrielle, and I'm a level two chef. Hi, I'm Louisa, and I'm a level three chef. Today we're stepping into my familiar territory. We're making veggie burgers for eight years. I have been a vegetarian. Finally, I have become the expert. When people bite into a veggie burger expecting it to taste like meat, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. Today, we are making a sweet and smoky beet burger. I came up with this recipe when I was writing my cookbook on Persian food. burgers are all really different. When I always think about a classic veggie burger, I really like the use of black beans. I was vegan for a long time myself. I'm still mostly vegetarian. So I wanted to come up with a veggie burger that was really good and satisfying. So I decided to make one with Persian ingredients. Today we're gonna to be using the Light Life plant-based ground which suits me best just because it has less ingredients. It even has the little piece of paper at the bottom. I like that touch. First things first, we are going to go ahead and spread out these rinsed off black beans onto a parchment lined tray. So I'm going to pop the black beans into the oven now at 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes. So I have the black beans and that's going to be the basis of the burger. We've got sweet potato, we've got a shallot for some extra punch of flavor. And then we have our mushrooms, which are gonna provide some chewiness. And we're also gonna be adding in barley, which is gonna help with that chewiness too, it's a really chewy grain. First thing that I'm gonna do to get us started is to actually just peel and grate my beet. I just like to use a regular red beet. All you need is one small beet to make four patties. So I have an old fashioned grater, don't have a box grater. All right, that looks like about a cup. Then we're gonna put the ground into the bowl. This way we can mix it a little with our hands and form it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and saute up my sweet potato, shallots, mushrooms, with a little bit of salt. So you can see here, I'm already getting some nice browning, a little bit of that crispiness to the edges. That is really what I'm looking for. And my mushrooms now are reduced by no less than half, and the shallots are also cooked down nice and soft, so they're going to work really nicely in the food processors. I think we're gonna make three patties. 4 divided, 12 divided by 4 equals, what's that, what's that, four, this is in carry to 1. Measurements, never been my thing. So here I have all my veggie burger ingredients. I have started with some caramelized onions. I'm gonna throw into the pan my grated beets, garlic, walnuts, raisins, turmeric, smoked paprika, some cooked lentils, and I'm gonna saute all those things till they're just cooked through and really integrated. Okay, so we have all of our veggies prepped. We have our barley cooled down nicely and cooked. We have our sweet potatoes that have a nice browning to them. Our mushrooms are reduced. We have our black beans that were in the oven. And then we have all of our spices. In go my beans, my sweet potato, like half of my cooked barley. Because the barley adds a lot of chewiness, so I don't want it to get completely pulverized. My mushrooms and shallot that has been salted. Add in my spices, so my smoked paprika, my cumin, and chili powder. So here's my beet mixture that's been sauteed, and it's all been cooled. I'm gonna put it in the food processor and process it till it's just kind of chunky. It shouldn't be all all the way smooth. So this looks good. It's really broken down. It's this beautiful deep pink color from the beets. So it gives you sort of that feeling of a real a real meat burger. You feed somebody a good veggie burger and you can see it on their face. Their eyes light up and they're like, oh, this tastes good. But I'm, I ain't gonna let Steve know because then he ain't gonna shut up and I won't. The challenge with any veggie burger is making it actually stay together. Having a good binder is gonna make or break your veggie burger. So I have my tapioca flour here and that's gonna be what ends up bringing my burger together and holding it together. So I'm just gonna add some water and whisk it up so that it's good to go into the mixture. In this veggie burger, I use egg to help it stick together and then I also use cooked short grain rice Put that in the food processor. The cashew butter is also really, really thick. You can see how sticky it is. 
tapioca flour and the cashew butter, and last but not least, my barbecue sauce. At least I'm not adding in a half a cheesecake. I went there. I'm gonna add an egg, and this combination of the egg and the rice is really the glue that's gonna bind this veggie burger together. You don't want it so that it's unrecognizable from what it was. You can still see, you know, we have the barley in chunks. I still like to cook meat for like my mom, my girlfriend, my sister, her girlfriend, my grandma. To me, it kind of feels the same and it holds seasoning the same. You really can't tell the difference. I still want to feel like I eat meat sometimes. I think if I had put more rice in and if someone really wanted to do this vegan, you could try doubling the rice and pureeing that and using that as your binder and taking out the egg. I was that person that used to eat burgers at the barbecue. I could create my own plant-based burger and they can't even tell the difference. Surprise, surprise. So now I have my pureed rice and my egg and my vegetable mixture, so I'm just gonna fold these in together. So you can see that it's really, really thick. thick and it holds together, it's got structure. And if I can kind of form it into a ball, then obviously we're in a good spot. Some freshly cracked pepper. pepper. This is what the kids are doing nowadays. So, so I'll sprinkle it around like so. I add some paprika, the little oomph. I just removed my veggie patty mixture from the refrigerator. So now it's even more combined and will be really nice and easy to form into patties. Look at that consistency. That's what we need in relationships. This kind of consistency, right, right there. Kind of going for like a hockey puck shape and size. These patties are all coming out to be about the same size. These are my patties. So let's get cooking. So now I'm gonna fry up my patty. So what I'm gonna look for in my patties is just kind of a crisp. These patties and their texture are really solid right now. I don't fear that they're gonna fall apart when I flip them or anything. It should take three to four minutes, but the burners are different sizes, so I'm most likely gonna move this to the front and then that to the back, and then the one in the middle is gonna be the middle child. Not a lot of attention. The nice thing about searing these up in the pan is this also gives them a meaty flavor and a meaty texture just from getting that caramelization and searing in a pan. Doing this is nostalgic. I remember the first time I tried it. I was like, this ain't gonna taste like no meat. This is gonna taste like plastic. I'm gonna be disappointed. And then I bit into it and I said, these people done fed me a cow. Who do I talk to? Where's your manager? And then they said, no, relax. This is plant-based. You're fine. And then I hugged the guy. So I think we're probably good to flip now. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's perfect. That has a nice crust on it. Ooh, they're looking really nice and they're staying together really nicely. They definitely browned up a lot and that's exactly what we're looking for here. It's crunchy and seared on the outside, but then it's tender on the inside. I like cheeseburgers. I don't like just a regular burger. I usually go for American cheese. The other thing we definitely need to add is a little bit more barbecue sauce. So when I pop these into the oven a little bit, this barbecue sauce is gonna cook down a little and caramelize, and the interior of the patty will then be totally done because we did refrigerate them, and we wanna make sure that these are gonna be hot on the outside and on the inside. All right. So I'm going to leave them in there for 10 minutes. These burgers are ready to come off the grill. <laughs> yes. And here are my veggie patties. These are my patties. They look amazing. I wish you could smell them. This is my cooked veggie burger patty. So now you can't have a burger without the perfect bun. And this one is a little bit more on the husky side and it has sesame seeds. I always use potato buns. What you using? Wheat. It's laughable. We open up the bun. We want to spray it like so. I want to toast it just to have that extra texture and toastiness to it is going to make it really nice. Yeah, that's good. Lather it up. Or are you about to go for a tan? You gotta get that SPF 50. This is a traditional Iranian bread called Barbary bread. And if you can see, it's got these little seeds on it. Some people call them nigella seeds. Some people call them kalanji. And you can also see there's seams along the bread. It's 
smells toasty and like onions. And I'm just gonna cut it into a square. I'm gonna set the air fryer to around 250. And I'm gonna do that for a minute. So it's gonna heat up. I find it's better to kind of build up to the high heat and every nook and cranny gets crisp to the precise point that you want it. So without further ado, yes, we've got some toasty action going on. It's nice and hot and it's going to be really, really nice for my patty. So I have a really delicious cucumber tomato onion salad that I like to make to go on these veggie burgers. In Iran, it's called Shirazi salad. You can't have a burger without lettuce, tomatoes, and onions. We just need one good slice of tomatoes. Tomato. Oh, wow. So to top off my veggie burger, I'm gonna do some onion rings. The red onion I chose because I think it has a little bit of a different taste, a little bit of a different twist. I like the yellow onions. They have a really nice flavor and they'll absorb some of the spices and stuff. Uh, really nicely. Oh my gosh, this is cathartic. I need to just be around uh, onions all the time. I, just, I needed this cry. All right, so I'm just gonna season this simple salad with some lime juice. And last but not least, our butter lettuce. It adds a medium crunch. See, you can't even hear it. It's just a, a, a tiny whisper. This is what my mint looks like. I'm gonna put a little bit in my palms. So this is our gorgeous topping that's gonna go on top of the burger, Shirazi salad. The veggie burgers are cooling off, so I'm gonna make the egg that will go on top of it. So my onion's prepped and ready. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my spices. Some all-purpose flour, smoked paprika, chili powder, garlic powder. I'm gonna mix that all up with almond milk so that we can keep this nice and vegan. So we probably give the egg another one or two minutes and we just look at it impatiently and judge it for not changing fast. Dipping my ring in the batter and then I'm gonna go ahead and coat it in the panko and then it's going into the pan. Ooh. And six minutes exactly. Time. And these are my six minute eggs. And here are my onion rings. They're gonna be awesome. So when you're doing a sauce, you kind of just gotta feel it out. It's a mother's intuition thing. Take the first ingredient, sriracha, and I pour it in, in like five seconds. That felt right. That felt wrong. I was like, what? 0.1 seconds. You gotta add a lot of ketchup, mayonnaise. I think it makes a lot of sense to add a nice, punchy chipotle mayo to this burger. So I'm gonna start with some vegan mayonnaise though, very important. Add in some of my chipotle powder, some lime juice, and salt and pepper. It's really easy, really simple. And this is my chipotle mayo. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the time to eat the veggie burger. So first, you want to take your toasted bun and drizzle it on the bun like so. You want to grab the cheesiest burger, add one piece of lettuce. Yes, we have pickles. Lettuce, onions, tomatoes, and then your fried egg. And now you're ready to eat it. I'm going to assemble my patty. So I have my toasted sesame seed bun. And I'm going to first load that up with my vegan chipotle mayo. So I'm gonna put a generous Wop. I got my patty. <laughs> now I'm gonna add a couple avocado slices. Then I'm going to add my panko breadcrumb onion rings. And then we are going to do a little more chipotle vegan mayo on the top bun. Put that on. Here is my flatbread that I'm using as my bun. So I'm gonna put one piece down that I cut. And the first thing I'm gonna top it with is a yogurt mixture that I made. This is called Mast O Musir. So I made this with yogurt and shallots, salt and pepper, that's all it is. I'm gonna put some down on the bread underneath the burger, and then I'm gonna put some more on top. It's so good. I'm gonna put some of my cucumber tomato salad on top, and then I'm gonna put its little flatbread hat on top. And this is my veggie burger. And this is my barbecue cowboy black bean veggie burger. And here you have a beautiful Middle Eastern style veggie burger. Let's dig in. Mm. Mm. 
Oh. Mm. Oh my god. This burger is so good. I need more onions so I can justify me crying. Oh, perfect. Everybody wins, even the cows. Fatty, it's got avocado, you got the onion ring crunch. I mean, it's great. It's better than a regular burger. <laughs> it's really nuanced and it's still staying intact. It's not just like squishing down. Whether you're a meat eater or whether you're a vegetarian, anybody would enjoy this veggie burger. There's many different ways to make a great veggie burger. Let's see how each of our three chefs made theirs. Steven made his burgers from Light Life, a store-bought plant-based ground. It's also non-GMO project verified and doesn't include large amounts of carbohydrates like grains that add bulk to a veggie burger. Food scientists and chefs have long been working on how to create the taste and texture of ground beef using plant-based ingredients. Plant proteins can be dehydrated and mixed with water, kneaded together under heat. This allows the food mass to be extruded into various shapes such as patties or a consistency similar to ground crumbles, allowing for a texture that's chewy and slightly fibrous. Steven's ground includes pea protein as one of the main ingredients. Pea protein is mostly comprised of three globulin proteins, legumin, visilin, and convisilin. These proteins are very heat stable and have emulsifying properties, which is why Steven can form his ground into a patty that holds its shape well when he cooks it. Gabrielle's barbecue cowboy black bean burger combines black beans, sweet potato, and pre-cooked barley. Nothing too fancy. This is a cowboy burger, so when you're out on the range, you make friends with your cow so you can't eat it. Barley is high in alcohol and acid soluble glutalin and prolamin proteins. These proteins don't dissolve in water. They tend to clump and bond with the carbohydrate pentosins, which give barley its sticky quality and glucans, which form a soft gel. The black beans she added contain a high concentration of water-soluble globulin proteins and starch fractions amylose and amylopectin. They swell when cooked in water and add a smooth and creamy, slightly starchy, but soft texture. Gabrielle added tapioca flour, which comes from a root, so it's a nice, clear binding agent. It definitely swells when you add water and heat it, so it works really nicely in this burger. Before cooking, starch and sweet potatoes is held together in tight, compact granules. When you cook the sweet potatoes, the granules start to swell and form a soft gel. The cashew butter she used added rich, creamy smoothness to her veggie burger. Nuts like cashews are very high in fat, which is held in tissues called oil bodies. When we chew nuts, we crush the oil bodies and they become very creamy on our tongue. Gabrielle rested her veggie burgers in the refrigerator, which helped to increase the firmness and allowed time for starch and protein hydration. Louisa's veggie burger is inspired by her rich Persian culinary heritage and incorporates raw beets as a main ingredient. Beets are red from a pigment called betalanes, which are stable and hold their color over a wide range of pH. So you can combine them with various ingredients and retain that rich pinkish red color. Louisa also used walnuts, which are an exceptional food for flavor, nutritional density, and texture. They're high in alpha-linolenic and linoleic polyunsaturated fatty acids, and thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin. They also contain alka-tocopherol, which is vitamin E, E. To help with binding, Louisa uses short grain rice, which contains more of the starch fraction amylopectin and absorbs less water during cooking than other forms of rice. This makes the rice slightly sticky as the grains cling to each other, which helps to hold Louisa's burger together. Louisa also added an egg, which is the ultimate emulsifier because the yolk is loaded with lipoproteins like phosphatidylcholine and lysolecithin. And this combination of the egg and the rice is really the glue that's gonna bind this veggie burger together. Before forming her patties, Louisa did a quintessential level three technique. She used some oil on her hands so that none of the veggie patties would stick. Steven cooked his veggie burger in a stove top grill pan, giving it a true grilled burger look and taste. So that we can get those grill marks. 
This method of heating is called conduction, and it gives a nice crisp quality to the burger. Gabrielle cooked her burger in a pan for four to five minutes on each side, and then turned off her heat and transferred the pan to the oven. She baked it at 375 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes to finish it. By moving her veggie burger from the stove top and putting it into the oven, it finishes cooking using radiant heat, and it doesn't allow for excessive browning that she might get if she otherwise left it in the pan. Louisa cooked her patty in a cast iron skillet, which allows for really nice, even heating for her veggie burger. She cooked it for about 15 minutes, which also allowed a nice browning to occur. She wanted a doneness on par with a medium rare cooked beef burger. It's crunchy and seared on the outside, but then it's tender on the inside. Steven served his veggie burger on a potato bun. He crisped it using an air fryer. Air fryers circulate hot air to cook food that would otherwise be submerged in oil. The air fryer's cooking chamber radiates heat from a heating element near the food, thus cooking it more efficiently. It's an interesting way to toast his buns. Gabrielle chose a classic sesame seed bun for that iconic traditional burger look and feel. It's all about the bun. Louisa used a popular type of Iranian flatbread called Nana Barbari. It's long, oval-shaped flatbread and usually made with wheat-based all-purpose flour. There's a glaze that goes on top of the bread called rumal. Rumal is made of wheat flour, boiling water, and baking soda. The glaze is brushed on the dough before baking, giving it a beautiful golden brown color. Nana Barbari crust is rather thin and topped with poppy seeds or sesame seeds, which boost the fiber content. Steven's patties hold up really well to the American cheese that he added on top while cooking. Well, I think that's just the way I like my burgers, and that's okay. American cheese melts beautifully because of the emulsifiers added specifically for melting. Gabrielle added crispy onions as a topping, but she coated them in panko breadcrumbs and fried them, which heightens the crunchiness of these onions. Louisa completed her veggie burger by topping it with Master Mosir, which is a shallot-based yogurt, and Shirazi salad. The Master Mosir is prepared with dried wild shallots called Mosir. Her Shirazi salad adds a brightness to her dish with its combination of lime, mint, tomatoes, cucumbers, and onion. There's no shortage of imaginative veggie burger recipes choices. We hope you use some of our three chefs tips as inspiration next time you're in the mood for a veggie burger.